In this video, I'm going to discuss the basics of attack and release times, and I'm also going to discuss coupled versus decoupled attack and release or envelope times. Just to add that this video describes attack and release for the simplest possible peak compressor, FurComp2 is a lot more complicated and uses a lot of what is described here many times in combination, as well as some other more digital methods to smooth out the gain reduction. Okay, so what we do first is we take the attack time, but it could be release time, so attack or release in milliseconds, and then we take the sample rate, so for example, 48,000 hertz, and attack or release time example, we could say 10 milliseconds. And then we combine these two things and we get what's called an alpha value. And typically this alpha value will be something like 0 0.9993 or something like that. Usually almost one, but not quite. But for the purposes of this video, let's imagine that the alpha value is 0 0.9. It's probably never going to be 0 0.9, but that's a good number just for our test examples. And I'm not going to go into how this is calculated. It's quite simple, but it's not interesting for this video. Now that we've got an alpha, let's imagine that we have a peak compressor. At any moment in time, the peak compressor is telling us in dB how much the gain should change. So let's draw a graph of this. So for a compressor, we've got time and we've got dB gain reduction. Our peak compressor reacts instantly and it calculates the gain reduction for a compressor and the graph is going to follow the wave shape of whatever input you have and it's going to look something like this. Very wobbly, very fast. And it's going to depend on things like threshold, ratio, knee, etc. So how do we use this alpha value to get from this, which is very wobbly, to something that is very smooth, like maybe... I can't really draw smooth things with this pen, but you get the idea. We want to smooth that out, basically. How do we use this alpha value to smooth out our envelope of gain reduction? Well, for each audio sample over time, we say the output is equal to alpha times the previous output plus one minus alpha times the input. So this is a single pole feedback filter and you may recognize this as also being a low pass filter. But of course, the low pass filter is not applied to the audio we hear. It's a, being applied to the gain reduction signal. And of course, in a different type of compressor, this might be being used for envelope detection. But we're using a peak compressor as an example. So a better way of writing this would be output equals 0.9 times the previous output plus 0.9 one times the input. You may also recognize this as being what people would call an RC circuit or a resistor capacitor circuit, but I'm not gonna discuss electronics in this video because I wanna keep things simple. But the problem is we've got one alpha, but we want separate attack and release times. But here we're using an alpha which controls both the attack and the release. So we'll solve that problem in a minute. Let's see what this actually does. What it means is you have your current envelope level and you have your target, which is the gain reduction. And if the target is further away, we move there more quickly. And if the target is closer, we move there more slowly. So you can imagine this as we're constantly trying to follow or reach the target, but we never quite get there. The further away the target gets, the faster we move towards it. And the closer it is, the more that we slow down. So that's why, for example, an attack curve will look like this and a release curve will look like this. Because when the target is far away, we start reducing the gain very, very quickly. And then as we approach the target, we slow down. And for a release, exactly the same as the target is far away, we move very quickly. And then as we reach the target, we slow down. But how do we split this into separate attack and release times? Well, all we do is we just calculate two alphas one for attack and one for release. We'll call this alpha A for attack and alpha R for release. And in a coupled detector, we say if the input is smaller than the previous output, then we use the attack alpha. Otherwise, we use 
the release alpha with the same equation. And in the coupled detector, the previous output value is shared. So all we're doing is we're kind of branching between these attack and release times, depending on whether we're attacking or releasing. If the input value is equal to the previous output, it doesn't matter whether we use the attack alpha or the release alpha, because as you can see, if the previous output is equal to the input, then we're doing 0.9 times x plus 0.1 times x, which is just one times x, which is, just gives us the same input value. So this is the coupled. And it's called coupled because they share the same feedback. So how does the decoupled detector work? Well, you simply have two envelope detectors in series, okay? So for the attack envelope detector, you just have an attack alpha and there's no branching. So we have attack and then release. And you can actually do this the other way around. You can do the release stage before the attack stage. So the attack stage says, and again, this is our peak compressor working on dB values. And remember, they're all negative. Output equals attack alpha times the previous output from the attack stage plus one minus attack alpha times input and then release output says if the attack output, so remember we're using the output from the attack module as input is larger than the previous release output, then we need to smooth it because increasing gain is the release stage. So we do alpha release times the previous release output plus one minus alpha release times the attack output. Otherwise, if we're attacking, we simply give the output from the attack stage. This effectively means that the release stage has its own instantaneous attack stage. So what does this mean? This means that we have an attack stage which doesn't care which direction things are going and always smooths. And then we have a release stage which has its own instantaneous attack but then if we are releasing, we then smooth it out. For the decoupled detector, say our gain reduction looks like this, the attack smoothing will smooth it to be like this, and then the release smoothing will smooth it to be like this. But if we overlay the release smoothing on top of the attack smoothing, we can see that because the attack smoothing is attacking in both directions, i.e. the attack smoothing stage has its own release, which is the same as the attack, and the release stage is receiving the attack input, it means that the target that it's releasing to is not as high. And so this half is the input to the release stage, and so it kind of gets extended a bit further by the attack time. So we're not adding the attack time to the release time, but as the attack time increases, the release stage takes longer because you're sending one envelope, you're sending a smooth signal into the release stage. Whereas with the branching, you're sharing the same feedback and rapidly switching. Um, and in the branching or coupled detector, yes, the attack and the release do affect each other because you, you really only got one detector, but in a slightly more complicated way. And I hope that makes sense. That's how it works. Thanks for watching.